to go. Yeah. All right. Here we are. We're on the big screen. Bass Pro Shops booth. This is the Builds Podcast. We have a special guest here today. Do we have any Whiskey Myers fans in the house? There they are. Absolutely. We have Cody Cannon from Whiskey Myers sitting down with us on the Builds Podcast. Cody actually participated in the Celebrity Pro-Am yesterday, and I hate to say it, but he took second place to myself and my partner, Cody Cannon. <laughs> I'm here licking my wound. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of parallels between uh, being a professional musician and a professional bass fisherman. One being travel, two being expenses, and three being mingling with the fans. And yesterday when you came in the Bass Pro Shops booth, you said you were super excited to hop on the podcast because it's all about fan interaction. Yeah, that's one of the coolest things about the classic. <clears throat> Abbott and Booth are just being here. Yeah. It's just meeting all the people, shaking hands, talking to them about fishing. Fishing fans. Yeah. And speaking of fishing, you're wearing a Toad Thumper uh, lure company hat. Yeah. You yeah. started Toad Thumper Lures. Yep. In COVID. Yeah. During COVID. Yeah. yeah. So that was good. That was good because tackle sales were through the roof during COVID. <laughs> well, it didn't come out during COVID. Oh, That's it just didn't. when I started working on it. Working yeah. On it designs. Yeah. I don't know. It just something was just in my mind. That I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened. It was just, I started having, like I'd lay in bed at night and have different lure designs for some reason start coming into my head. And, uh, I had a couple of years off. And so my, my original idea was just to design them for somebody else. Right. I, I didn't want to like have to put my name on them or anything. It's like, here you go. That'd be cool. Be like, Oh, I made that, you know, like give it to um, Lee Livesey and just, just say, here, he's or a, yeah. whatever company, whatever, you know, I don't need nothing. And then, uh, I called my buddy who's my partner in this now. Cause he had, know some people in the industry and stuff he's like i oh, let's just do it ourselves and uh, i was like cool what well, do you know anything about you know time a lure company or designing or anything like that he's like no he's like do you i was like nope <laughs> and it was like cool so <laughs> cool. i sailed into the abyss <laughs> that's awesome dude that is absolutely yeah, it's been fun amazing two like, years two years old today from when well, it actually launched so like yeah. have you had the uh, growth you expected yeah it's been more then probably I definitely expected because the first you when when you do something like that you don't know people's gonna think it's stupid right right so you got to be really careful you got to make the first bait great for sure you know all of them great but you don't want to mess up the first time because you only get one chance to make a first impression uh so it was great yeah because we didn't know if like anybody would buy it, like one yeah yeah it's, it's for sure really good. So as you sit here on the couch here and uh, on the you know on the Bass uh, the Bass Pro Expo here. Um, like a lot of people are wondering why is Cody Cannon, you know, lead singer of Whiskey Myers sitting on the couch here in this fishing arena. Talk about a little bit about how, where, and how you grew up bass fishing. I understand Whiskey Myers, the band sponsors, one of our anglers, Lee Livesey, uh, explain a little bit how and where you grew up fishing. So I'm from, uh, Natchez, Texas, which is outside of Palestine, Texas, um, which is East Texas. Uh, I just been a fan of the sport my whole life. So my first memories were fishing with my dad, my grandpa. Kind of like most people's story. Sure. Um, yeah, so I'd been a fan my whole life. Been part of, just been fishing. Uh, and then with Lee, we were, we were friends with Lee. And then we seen that he would have that opportunity to uh, kind of go pro and stuff like that. So I was like, man, this would be great to actually sponsor something like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And just be cool. a part of that. So it's been really cool. How did that happen? Did you reach out to Lee or he reached out to you? We knew, Well, we already knew each other for a while. We had fished together. And stuff. Very cool. Uh, so we knew each other probably 10 years before that. Uh, and then we probably just called him up. I don't really remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it, we, we initiated it. Very like we cool. called him. Yeah. That doesn't come around often. You, you, know, you look at like all the anglers with the jerseys and all the sponsorship logos and things like that all across this expo floor. I mean, yes, you have to work hard to garner yeah. those relationships, and, you know, it, but for a big company like or a band like Whiskey Myers to approach an angler like yeah. that is so rare like that is super rare yeah it just popped in my head I mean you have all that stuff you have to spend money on like marketing and stuff like that it was like why not do something cool and different like that and then you actually get to help your friend who you believe in live his dream yeah so it was just kind of perfect so, so do you have like deliverables like does he have do you have like 
Lee, you've got to use our song this many times on social media. <laughs> no, I don't think we have. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I don't think we have. Lee's supposed to take me fishing, but we haven't been fishing too much lately, so I'm going to have to get him on that. Both of y'all have been busy. That's amazing. It sounds like a dream partnership. <laughs> it's funny when you when you just said, you know, you're talking about when you're thinking of lures for Toe Thumper Lure Company and you're sitting in bed at night, you got your lovely wife over here and... And uh, like, shouldn't you be like in bed, like, you know, thinking about like songs or lyrics and you're over here thinking about fishing lures and development? Like, how does your mind work as a musician, you know, when you like chill and like chill out and like, do you want to be thinking about fishing or the music thing? Um, I prefer to be thinking about the music thing. Music, or the, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, the fishing thing, because I do the music thing all the time. It's like, it's your like job. An outlet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it would be an outlet, but it's parallel, like writing a song and creating a lure or a product, any product, it comes from the same part of your brain. Right. So it's just like a parallel experience. At, at the end of the day, you're just creating art. You're taking, you know, something that was nothing and just creating. So it's it's a, actually a very natural experience for me. The same parts, the same feelings or everything. If I'm working on a lure or colors or whatever, tying jigs, is the same thing as writing lyrics. Wow. Yeah. So how'd you end up on uh, bringing toad dumpers to the expo? Was did you always plan on being here? Like, yeah. So we we launched. Um. So I started designing them and stuff in COVID, and we actually launched. Uh, this would be our second classic or something like third classic, but this would be two years. Yeah. So we wanted to launch it always at the classic. That's right. Cool. Yeah. So have you grown up like watching the classic? Yes. Do you know who that guy is over there? He's in a red jersey. Like I think his last name's Van Dam. Do you know who that guy is over there? Yeah, says my hunting buddy. Oh yeah. We don't, we, we don't speak much. These days. <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't know, Kevin. Is he standing over there? Yeah, he was over there. Yeah, no, yeah. So, well. K, yeah, so buddies with KVD. Who else? Who else are you buddies with on tour? Um, it was Zona. Mark, Mark Zona. Zona. Davey. Excellent guy. Uh, and then uh, John Cruz, Caleb Summerall, Lee, Very obviously. Cool. Um, there's probably some more I missed, but yeah. It's so the cool that, that I've got the you know they come to shows it's so cool yeah. to hear that and especially like yesterday at the celebrity pro-am guys like travis pastrana all mm -hmm. these professional athletes like actually hearing them step out of their arena whether it be nfl mlb you know a uh, touring musician like yourself i mean and sit there and like talk about rick clun or kevin van damme yeah. dude it like it literally i mean it i could see the expression expression on y'all's face it's just like like for you to step out of your world and come into our world it's like it's it's it makes it so much more approachable for a guy like me or a guy like anyone out here he's a normal dude you. yeah absolutely you're a normal dude absolutely just a normal normal dude and um you know you guys travel all around the country all around the world performing in front of you know hundreds and thousands of millions of fans and everything but to see you here just like super down to earth i mean that is just that's unreal everybody's kind of normal like yeah. once you start meeting people like you know yeah maybe they're big or whatever little yeah whatever like everybody's kind of the same i think that's just the east texas and you like speaking yeah. right now because like everyone i've met from east texas super down to earth yeah yeah very well, much so the same. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh in texas is you know like depending on what part of texas you go to pretty much overall they're like you know very welcoming southern hospitality yeah. type thing but east texas by far are you know uh you know the most accommodating people you could absolutely find yes most of the time <laughs> most of the time yeah i'd agree there just um, don't hole jump you yeah <laughs> do you do you have like goals with the company like they like when you think about okay this is my lure company do you have things that you want to accomplish on that end yeah so um, and i'm being honest right here because i have no reason not to be um it's just like literally with my music it's just to make really really cool stuff really dope stuff that i dig um i have no other motivation than that to produce right. great art um 100 percent. i have no motivation not in it for the money not, not, not the no fame. monetary yeah um you know no nothing like that it's not like to get more fame or something like that right um it's literally just to make art just to make a good product that people love uh, you know, yeah. it's just it's just like writing a song to me. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah, when you see Cody Cannon, a musician or artist, it's yeah. literally that. You're literally an artist. Yeah, and it's it's the same exact thing. It's just taking an idea and making it come to life. That's the best part. That's the best part to me about music. That's what I like the most, and that's the the mo the thing that I like the most about this is taking that idea. And uh, it's not like you know a podcast or even being here. This is all cool. Yeah, but it's like 
in the shop working. It's yours. Like it's when you are actually in the creation. Yeah, it's you yours. Know, the process yeah. of creating. What's yeah. the time frame you work off when you guys design something? Do you give yourself a time limit or is it one of those just when it happens, it happens? Yeah. We got to get better at that because I'm, I'm, I'm doing like a bunch of that stuff, all the testing and all that stuff. So it, it takes me like years. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so you wouldn't work out at another company. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm just really kind of perfectionist about that. It's the same way it takes us a long time to make albums and stuff like that too. Uh, it just kind of depends on the product. Right. So um, there's more, there's more issue. Like some things are harder than others, right? Uh, there's more problems you have to address or fix. And then you run into more engineering, engineering problems and things like that. Yeah. Some stuff and then some stuff's pretty simple. How do you handle that though on the road so much when you're touring and you're also. That's why it takes a long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll come home and I, and I don't come home and hang out. I come home and go to work. Wow. Yeah. yeah. She'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is awesome. So you spoke about albums earlier. So how many uh, albums do you guys currently have released right now? I don't know. Six. Six albums. Something yep. like that. We've and, been to eight, this is our 18th year, right? Wow. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. So out of the six albums, um, how many fishing references are there in your lyrics? I didn't know there were any, but now and, and now I look back and there's like there's there's several. There's and at like the time, it was just natural for you to just like throw a fishing reference in there. Yeah, I write like how kind of how I do everything. It's very just by the hip. Like I never have a a plan to go in with the idea for a song. If I try to do that, it's bad. I literally just have to sit there and just let it flow, like be in a state of flow. And then I kind of look up and it's there. The song's there. So that stuff comes natural. So then you kind of, then you kind of look and you're like, oh man, I said that like three times, <laughs> but you don't know, right? Yeah, right. Wow, that's insane. So that was just all natural stuff that came in there. But can you? So what are some of those lyrics? Was uh, I don't mind work and I love to fish, and then there's an explicit after that. <laughs> yeah, of course, we're fishermen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then there's uh, there's like three I figured out the other day, but uh. There's like two or three. That's yeah. awesome. I could tell who the boss is in this relationship. So awesome because we're the it's same. It's hard way. to remember she, all, all the songs. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> that is awesome. When uh, So what's your goal being here at the Classic? Is there a goal? Do you just want to meet people or? Um, we've had a lot of people just come to the booth. Good. Right. Good. All right. The fan base and stuff. And so I'm showing them some new products that aren't out yet. And then uh, selling, providing, providing stuff for them. Yeah. What uh, product wise, what's your favorite thing? What? Like uh, when you're, what's the thing that you're proudest of, of your lure line? Um, we only have a couple of things. We have two frogs and we have two soft plastics. Frogs. And then we have more stuff coming out. But that was the first one. So definitely the frog. Yeah. Do you Frog's test a killer. Do you test it on uh, Palestine or Fort Moore? Um, I've tested them. I test them on all lakes. It depends what I'm testing. There's, yeah. you know, if I'm testing like durability, I go to, I found out that. You go to private lake. Oh yeah, of course we <laughs> do the time, same right? thing. Right, because yeah. yeah. you can go to a Palestine or Fork, and it may take you a few days to get X amount of bites to test their ability. We sure. can go to a private lake, catch a hundred five pounders in one day, and be like, "Cool, yeah, it's done. It worked. Check that yeah. box." Yeah. So yeah. it just depends on what stage of the, you know the testing you're in. Very would you say Toad Thumper Lure Company? Would you say they're more of like a uh, power fishing style of lure company? Because I look at a guy like Lee Livesey, who's all power, the four facing thing. He kind of shies away from, he's always throwing a big giant top water walking bait right. or flip in or a big swim bait or something like that. And then yesterday during the celebrity pro-am, I mean, I, I idled right by you guys, dude. And the first cast you made was a bait caster. And like, you were just winding away and like getting yeah. after <laughs> Like you seem like, yeah, you seem like a power fisherman. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, like the, the, the uh, full forward facing sonar and stuff. Now I've, I've, I feel like finesse stuff, but it's crazy. Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? Um, it's fun. It's different, but it's different. Like historically, through my life, I def definitely didn't have a bunch of spinner reels on the Not deck in East like Texas. I do now. Yeah. yeah, you know, it was yeah. a jig, crankbait, spinner bait, stuff like that. Yeah, Lake Fork stuff. Yeah, that is awesome. Big, big swim baits. Yeah. yeah. Do you plan to mimic the trends in your bait line, or just stick with what you? Love no, because I just I don't know how to create like that. I know some sometimes it's best. It's really best, you know, in music to do that. We've never done that. I mean, we have 20 years of work to test that. So it's probably best, but no, I mean, you probably have to sometimes, but right now I just have the designs that I already have kind of caved up and like, I don't No, I try not to. I right. try to create whatever comes to mind. So it just depends, right? If you have, also, if you have a bunch of people, you know, 
that uh, are, you know, a fan of your product. And they're like, hey, I want this. I want this. Please make this. Then you should probably listen to them and do that. Right. Yeah, yeah that's smart. You seem like a type of guy that, you know, pretty much keeps it between the lines. You're a sharp guy. And being in the music industry where like, oh, party like a rock star is like everywhere. Yeah. Right. And I know some fishermen who literally party show like up star. to venue <laughs> to venue in the first place. They go is either the bar or, you know, the gas station, pick up a 24 rack or whatever it is. How hard is it to stay out of that trap? You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I'm an old man. I've, I've been doing it for a while. So it's easy for me now. <laughs> it wasn't so easy for me in my 20s. We were pretty wild. Uh, now I'm 38. Now. 30, yeah, Married, same age, yeah. I have kids and everything, so I'm good. Yeah. I play my show and I go to bed. Do you see that a lot <laughs> with like musicians what, that either open up for you guys or you have opened up for where like they have fallen in that trap and it's just like been on a downgrade? I mean, we've seen it with several of Trait's favorite country uh, stars. You know, they show up to shows just you know, yeah, whatever. This is uh, such and, a and, random conversation. Hey, he's a musician. We could talk. <laughs> we could talk. Yeah, just the pins kind of like in your early days, you're wild, right? Just yeah. like anybody. With anything. And then you, you know, you have kind of the things we have in our lives and, you know, and everything. So that kind of gets it. Then you'll see usually in their 30s, they'll chill out. And then they either remain like that or if something bad happens later in life. Right. Then they go kind of back into yeah. it. Yeah. So it just kind of depends. Yeah. But it sounds like you always have fishing as an outlet, whether, you know. I'm you good. Have to, yeah, absolutely. You, That's awesome. there, I'm, too, I'm too tired to party. <laughs> yeah. Are there, would you say there's a lot of uh, people in your genre that fish? Or do they just like um, to talk about it? That are true outdoorsmen. What do you, well, we don't, I don't feel like what do you I do? have a genre. Yeah, because I would agree with that. Yeah, you created yeah, a genre, right? I would um, agree with that. There, uh, I wouldn't say a lot, right? Because you have, I mean. I would say there are some, yeah, like, for sure, and probably definitely more on the country than the rock and roll side, right? Um, but it just depends. Probably more on the country. I don't know if all of them are telling the truth. Yeah, yeah. But on the rock and roll, there's probably still a few. Uh, Ronnie Van Zant loved to fish. Yeah, and uh, I think James James Hetfield fishes too. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I could be my totally wrong. wrong. My favorite, but I'm like ninety percent sure. My favorite band, yeah, Metallica. I think absolutely. He yeah, he's got like a giant ranch out in Colorado yeah. or something yeah. with stock trout and all kinds of stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Um, how many days would you say you fish out of your year? Um, I used to fish a lot. Now, you think you would uh, start making lures and fish more. You actually fish less. Less. So sure. what you're doing, and if you are fishing, you're actually just testing. Yeah. Um, so it just depends. Like right now, it's spring. And so um, I'm here. But if I wasn't, I'm not working. So winter and spring, I get a lot of time on the water as much as I want. But you also have kids, right? Sure. Um. In the summer, zero nowadays because we're gone almost all summer. Maybe a oh. couple here and there in the fall. So I don't, I don't know really. I bet it's not as many as you would think. Um, just with all the work, dude. Yeah. How did you find time to be here with us? Like I, I'm still. We like, don't work. In a, shock. We don't work a lot right now. We don't you don't lot, really? Yeah. Not in the springtime. Well, mm -hmm. it's all summer tours, pretty much. You yeah, do summer a lot, and then fall you start slowing down. So from fall to probably about a month from now is when I'm pretty chill, and then I get real busy. About a month from mm -hmm. now, you hit the road. Yeah. But when uh when I was younger, especially with the fishing thing, I could just when I was off the road, I could just go fishing. Whenever, now, I wasn't yeah. married, didn't have kids, yeah, yeah. So it was like as as many days as I could. Right. Yeah. Now, now there's a little more responsibility. Have, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, so how does that so how does that lay out? I mean, like you leave here, you go home, chill. Mm -hmm. Like when you ramp We're up, going, to, I'm going fishing. Yeah. <laughs> He's just telling you right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm itching. I'm here. And yeah. Fish. Seeing all this on yeah. Oh, man. So I'll, I'll definitely fish probably like two days as soon as I get home. If I don't have any, I can't go Monday, but like I'll have to look at where probably like Tuesday and then like a third day. I'll definitely go water those two days. Um, then I'll hang out with Easter's coming up. So I'll hang out with the family all day. Then we'll see about next week. So myself on tour, I'm 13 years on tour and, and, um, like I, I see the schedule, right? The 10, 11 tournament schedule at the start of the year. And I completely like, I look at it. All right, cool. I'll catch them here. I'll catch them there. I'll throw a swim bait on this one. We'll go flipping on this one. And then like a couple of days go by and I completely forget the schedule. Like how, how good are you at staying on top of your, you know, your, your, your traveling schedule? I mean, can you tell me like the first three venues you guys go to? Nope. I got a, I got an app. On you got to look, right? I got an app on my phone. That is, you just show up and party, party. Yeah. and fly out. I do, yeah, not party, but pretty much. Perform, um, yeah. Now I don't know where we're going until probably week of, because I, I don't need to know where I'm going on 
Now, will a manager call and say, hey, you're going here? Or is your wife? I have it on my phone. Oh, your phone. Yeah. So I just look yeah. at my calendar. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So places like you just talked about, you're going to be, I just told you, I'm originally from San Jose, California. You're going to be playing I know out I'm going to be out there, but I don't, I don't know where. You don't know where. Yeah. But you guys travel from obviously like us from Florida to California, Texas and down, yeah. but also international too, right? I mean, do you guys have? Yeah, we've done the, we've done Europe a whole lot. We haven't done Europe in a while because we're, we, uh, we all just had little kids, like all of us, right? right. So we're all at that stage, but we're probably going to go to Europe it's next year. We'll go back there next year. Now, how does that work? You, like Europe calls up and says, hey, look, we want Whiskey Myers to play here. And it goes through all the, uh, your agent. You know, agent, you, yeah. We have a big agency, so they have a European kind yeah. of whole branch of that agency. But then the agency will come to you and say, hey, do you guys want to do this European tour? And you guys are like, no, we no. got the kit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <No. laughs> Too bad. I wish I could tell these guys I don't want to go attend the classic you know, and Pittsburgh like, oh, PA. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> that's that's kind of it. Though. We sit down and then they talk about, hey, here are the dates. What do you want to do? And say, yay or nay. Yeah. Mm. That's awesome. So when you land, when you get home and you haven't, you've been in Europe, you haven't gotten to fish, you land, what's the lake you go to? Um, just, man, I'm just going to one. It would have to be Athens. It's right by my, yes. my house. Yeah. Yes. It's, so, Good it's lake. so easy to fish. And there's, I mean, it's small. Right. You, know you got options. Grass. Got a great dock. restaurant. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah, that would be it. Just like that. Interesting. Have you ever toured the Lunker Bunker over there? Like the, the Share Lunker program they've got like on Athens where they reproduce the 13 plus mm -hmm. pounders? No. No, I went to the, the little fishery. The, yeah, yeah, that, that thing. Yeah. I was younger. We need to take our kids. We've been talking about taking our kids. You there. need to, yeah. They literally have like 13, 14, and 15 pounders spawning in these tanks where they'll take that spawn and release them to various lakes all across Texas. And we're the yeah. only state that does that. You know, yeah. that's amazing. The I didn't see that part. I, I remember the big tank. I was young, but I remember the big tank. They had a real big, they had one of the big fish with forking in it, I think. Yeah. They call it the Lunker Bunker. Yeah. Yeah, it's legit. And the offspring, they call Lone Star Strain or whatever. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Interesting, Athens. How's our boy Lee doing? I mean, I haven't seen him. He's good. doing good. He was like he, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't know my uh, tour manager, Chris, who's buddies with Lee, also texted me. We were, we were eating right before we came here. He's like, man, Lee's catching them. And I was like, I haven't even looked. Like, I <laughs> You've been slanging busy. frogs, man. That's <laughs> yeah. cool. So what's special? So I've seen your frog on social yeah. media, actually. What's special about it? Man, it sounds stupid. Like the idea. Everything. Well, it was just like, for me, there was a, I could not, I didn't find, like, I'm not trying to sh throw shade on anything, right? No, right. But I couldn't find one for me that I loved everything about. And so I built one that I love everything For about. everything. And you hope that they do, too. Right. So the hookup ratio is amazing. But the, the way I did the placement of the hooks, the way I changed kind of the geometry of the body. Wow. To be easier to compress. It's like little small things. Yes. That make a lot of difference. Is you're, it, um, you're, really, you're right about that because there's like very popular frogs on the market that just do one thing really well, whether right. it's popping or, you know, but that popping Great frog, action, you terrible. cannot walk it. Yeah, right. Or the I can walk, I can walk uh, our thumper, our popping frog in place. Wow. Over yeah. Bop, bop. And you can say like, I just went in and like tuned any like uh, the swamper and the thumper. They actually have the, the legs. If you look at them are slightly different. That was for me like tuning them. And tell them to change the to legs. To get them to now. walk or whatever. Change better. legs yeah. now. Boom, that's perfect. You know what wow. I mean? Wow. So just movement of that, the weight, uh, you know, the heads on them and stuff like that, do different things. The geometry of the body, uh, keeping them away from like the hard lines to make it rigid. Yeah. Um, you can get, you can use a material that's still durable, right? If you don't make it rigid. Right. And so they'll be like, oh, this frog's so soft and it's so durable. It's like the frog's not that much softer. It just feels softer. Because right. it's not rigid. Yeah. So it's like little things like that. You just think about it. It's kind of, at the end of the day, of making that stuff, to me, like I'm not saying like the best in the world in any of that stuff, right? I'm new. But to me, it's just, you're like solving problems, right? You have an idea and then you're like, well, how do I, how do I fix those problems? Right? And then you just sit there and yeah. think about things like geometry or something. Yeah. Like, or, <laughs> yeah. You know, like East Texas like geometry. That. Yeah. Charles is like, oh, where for this and yeah. that. You know? And then you hope it works. What was the time frame on designing that? From? It took me all of COVID because I got it and I had the idea and it's still close to the same on the frog. And I threw it out there and I walked in and it was like, oh, he's Ooh. doing exactly what I think. It's wow. all great. And then I catch one, I set the hook and I get it and it falls apart. And like everything kind of ripped out in there. I said, 
well, I'm halfway there. So you go back to the drawing board and you fix it. You're fixing it. You're fishing it like, oh, I fixed that problem. Now I got this problem. So it took me like maybe like five or six different prototypes of it to get it to there. So, so it took a long time. So you started in 2020. Um, yeah, whenever COVID first, first happened, a couple months after that, I was just laying in bed and that kind of all started coming to me. Uh, so 2020 to go through 2021, like we're talking a year, two years, because, you know, depending on who you are and what side of the aisle, you don't know how long yeah. COVID actually lasted. What was the first <laughs> classic? Cause that was when it was literally just launched. So t- Fort Worth, did you Fort launch Worth. it in no. Fort Worth? No. no. Mm-hmm. Gunnersville? Gunnersville? No, it was in uh, on the East Coast. Hartwell. 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 Yeah, Hartwell. So, so twenty two. So COVID to Hartwell. Yeah. So two and years. They, they came in right before Hartwell. Perfect timing. Yeah. See, I'm gonna go over to the Toad Thumper yeah. booth and get give you some of these frogs after and talking. Everybody, like everybody that. that's fished on this stuff, they like them. You better watch out. He's known for knocking off things. No, hey, come on, <laughs> cheap shot. We already, uh, yeah, I've already had that happen, and it's cool. oh, really? I think it's, yeah, just recently about another bait. Uh, Who? And I just, I don't no, know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, come uh, on. She always sets these little traps for people <laughs> uh, to walk in. And uh, I thought it's cool, man. It's like, oh, that band's starting to sound like y'all. I'm like, that's cool. Flattering. Man. Yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah, it means you did something right. Yeah, if you have somebody copying you, then you're on the right path, right? Very cool. That's true. That is true with Keep the fishing trucking, industry, man. too. And we're yeah. about it. Yeah. That is awesome, dude. But that's fun. Get, I enjoy it. Did we just get a flag? We got flagged for... No, we didn't get flagged. Oh. No, flag just... for time. Time. We got it like four minutes. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry to be a... It's all, good. Really. it's all good yeah so uh celebrity pro and then we'll go back to that real quick and who did you fish with mr john soak up i believe yes. the local boy mm-hmm. here yeah. yeah you learn anything from him or just everything you guys did you already knew kind of fishing wise no we we didn't um do any new like techniques that i hadn't did before we we, we uh we scoped for a little while there was there were so many other fish yeah. like catching like all the hybrids and stuff oh yeah and then you could tell you know when you're scoping them you could tell when they're bunched up but if when they, they bust off and there's just singles everywhere, it's like, how can you tell 12 inch, you know, sand bass from 12 inch smallmouth? Dude, you're really well versed uh, in bass fishing. Like, so we, this uh, impresses me. So we did that for a while and we were like, hey, there's too many. Too many. We can't do this. And then right before that, I had caught one off the rocks. He was scoping out in the middle because I'd already caught mine. And then I was throwing at a point with a jerk bait and caught one. And then we're like, hmm. Because, I mean, we had been scoping for a while and we'd only caught a couple. We caught a bunch of sand bass and then um i was scoping and he liked the a point and with the a rig boom he said hmm i said oh okay so that's when we started catching so we completely just got away and we just went to hidden points with uh jerk bait and a rig wow that's got awesome a little minnow on a ball head well i will say i think that celebrity pro am yesterday was an absolute huge success i mean only guys like you of your stature make that possible and uh Hopefully they bring us all back next year, you know, and, That's and really it'll cool. be Fort Worth, right? Fort Worth Classic yeah. next year. and Be there. It's close to home. Yeah. And since, you know, the, the classic competition will be going on in Lake Ray Roberts, maybe we could bring the Eagle Celebrity Mountain. Pro-Am to Eagle Mountain or yeah. something like that where we catch yeah. bigger fish. So. Yeah. That it was no, that's really cool that yeah. you're doing that. Yeah. 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 That was cool to that be a part of. Brings a lot of attention, different viewership and different demographic to our little sport of bass fishing that we all love so much. So, Randy Moss was there. Uh, Randy freaking Moss cool with Rick Clun. Like yeah. that was amazing. <laughs> I would have paid to be in that boat. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. Well, before we let you go, can uh, I mean, like I said, you're uh, you've been all around the world. You're, um, uh, you know, just an absolute stud in every aspect of your life. It sounds like that's what my wife says about me. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, can you just tell us uh, quickly uh, or give us some life advice? Uh, whether you're an aspiring musician, aspiring pro bass fisherman, lure builder, give us some advice as we part ways here. Be yourself huge uh always you know shoot for the stars and try to fail uphill you can make it if you fail uphill fail yeah okay i've been failing uphill my whole life and look where you are (laughs) you're on the couch with us that is so awesome don't be scared yeah very cool all right cody cannon lead singer whiskey myers thank you so much for having us thank you really appreciate it thank you thanks cody thank y'all good job dude 
Alright, let's go get some frogs. Let's go get some frogs on the frogs.